On this episode of HairTube, we're gonna find out if blondes really do have more fun. And is the bob still relevant? Is it timeless or is it done? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. Um, fortunately, this is a little bit different to the regular intro um, due to technical difficulties. Um, the regular intro that I did, um, I don't know what happened to it. It didn't work, didn't record. These are the things we deal with as uh, YouTubers. However, you're about to meet Emma. Emma's a beautiful uh, young girl, came to see me. Um, we, in the intro, we discussed whether the blonde was still, um, you know, the, the most requested um, color was a blonde or brunette. And then we're also talking about whether we were going to um, continue with the bob shape and how relevant that still is. So you're about to meet her, sit back. I know the intro is not as it normally would be, but the rest of the content I'm sure you enjoy. Cheers. We are back from the basin. Um, one of the things that I did while I was over there uh, is I used the Biolage Fiber Strong treatment, but I didn't shampoo the hair. I just used warm water, wet it down, and then used that treatment um, and then rinsed it out. I don't want to. Um, agitate the scalp um, before a on scalp lightening process. Um, so the oils that were on Emma's scalp will actually provide a buffer um, so that um, she's not sensitized to the um, the lightener being on her scalp. It's something if you, it's worth mentioning if you're doing a client for the first time, ask him if they've had that done before. And if they haven't had it done before, it's absolutely worth um, doing a patch test and then ask him to come back. I have seen not for a long time, but I have seen people react to it. Um, so it's very important that we do our due diligence and make sure that we're looking after the, the health and welfare of our clients before we go putting um, lightener on their scalp. So, so I've got my three sections. Something that I, you'd hear me say a lot is, I'm happy with uh, taking one large section of back, provided I have a scissor that can cut through it and I can control the hair. So I know Sectioning is a very crucial part of cutting hair and colouring hair. It can also make it inefficient and inaccurate if you, you know, you get a bit too over the top with it, so. There's our length. Now we'll move on to the sides. Okay, moving on to the side, one of the things that's really important to remember is that when we, when we are cutting over the ear that we don't put too much tension. Otherwise what happens is we end up with a hole there. So I always use the wide end of the comb and if it's left a little bit longer or if you have to make an adjustment when it's dry, that's far better than having to go back and recut it because you've put a hole there. So um, when the hair is above the shoulder, I don't need to turn the head to the side, but if you wanted to, you could go like this, just look over your left shoulder for me. And now all of a sudden it's much easier to get in there. So 
you can see I'd, I'd actually don't stretch it over at all. I'd sort of um, comb the hair under and then I cut it natural fall. And I can always make an adjustment there if I have to. Like I said, you don't want to have to go back and then cut the whole back shorter and then redo the sides because you put a hole there. Which is really easy to do. I find that I even sometimes when you know, I've had a big day and I'm in a bit of a hurry, I've done that by accident. So it's something to, to keep in mind. Just do that on the other side. Again, just making sure you don't stretch that down too far over the ear. If it's caught under there, just comb it out. Look over your right shoulder for me. Perfect, thank you. Haircut's done. We're just now going to dry the hair off. As I said um, at the beginning, um, I wanted to get the length right and the shape right. When the colour's been done, I'm going to shape it a little bit in the front so that when we push it left to right, um, we're going to have you know, some shape here and then we're going to do some texture and a little bit of layering, but we're not layering in a traditional sense. We're just going to... And if you guys have seen me do it in longer hair before, we just don't want the hair to fall at one length because it ends up being a triangle. So to give it a little bit of variation, um, but now we're just going to dry it off and then we're going to get into the colour. Okay, let's go mix up some color. Okay, let's mix up some light now. So we've got our Light Master with Bonder inside and our um, Matrix 30 volume. Um, we're gonna put that on straight onto a scalp. When I feel like it's almost ready, I'm gonna come back, mix up some fresh uh, Light Master with Bonder inside and uh, maybe 10 or even 20 volume and just clean those ends out so we can try and rinse it all at once. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the toner today, but I'm thinking maybe peachy, pinky, but we'll just wait and see um, what it looks like when um, we get it all nice and clean. Our lightener's mixed. Um, I prefer, I guess, because this is a preference to start in the back. Um, in the event that we've got to rinse it um, early, if we start in the back, it makes it really, really easy to rinse. Um, because um, sometimes where we apply first, it can come up quicker. That's a, you know, more relevant, I guess, with foiling. But I also make sure that I do it when I'm um, doing on-scalp applications as well. The key for me when doing on-scalp lightening is saturation. You don't want to apply lightener onto the scalp like tint or like a semi or demi or like a permanent um, colour. Because... Um, the performance is often dictated on the saturation of the lightener on the hair. So although you want to make sure you work neat and you don't want to slap it on, you want to make sure you do apply it liberally um, for the reasons I'll say that it does hinder the performance if you put it on too light. So. It's on the scalp. Um, just to recap, started at the back first, um, then applied in the front. Halfway through, I actually went and mixed up again. It's very important. I use 
a mix for the back and a mix for the front. I don't make the whole bowl last the whole application. The reason being is it does oxidize when it's in the bowl and it loses its potency, so it's important to remix. We're gonna let this come up to about a level 10 and it's lightening really, really well, which I'm happy with. And then we're gonna go back through and I'm gonna use a very gentle lightener and we're just gonna clean those ends out and we'll probably do that at the basin. Um, then we should have a nice, um, you know, even palette. We'll um, bring Ember back to the chair once we've rinsed it, and then we'll have a chat about what sort of toner we're going to do. See you guys in a sec. We're halfway there. Um, we've lightened Ember's hair, so you can see I've lightened in the root. I've lightened through the mid lengths and ends. Uh, now it's just about putting some colour back. So I'm thinking, I think it's a bit too light for her complexion, so I'm going to darken it maybe one level, but I'm thinking about putting something in there like a little bit of maybe something pink, violet pink, something like that, or pearl. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna head out the back, uh, mix up some color sink, and um, come back and get this toner on. I've decided to do, I'm gonna use Matrix Color Sync. I'm gonna do half SPP, half 8P, with some red to give it that pearly pink feel. Um, and hopefully it brings us somewhere around level 10, 9, 10-ish. Um, just because I want to put some depth back in there, so let's see how we go. Okay, let's get this toner on. Just going to grab the comb. And I'm actually going to start. This. Again, it, this is just for me. This is a lot of the things I do are actually pretty unconventional so if I go and start around the hairline it's going to grab and it's going to be really bright there so what I do is I actually start here I'll leave the hairline out I'm going to start here all in the back and then I'll do the hairline very very last because I don't want it to just be really bright around the hairline and because the hair is finer there it always lightens quicker there and it also tends to grab the color grabs really hard there so um, if you're doing this they're my little tips Again, this is, it's just what I do. There's no right or wrong. Doesn't mean I'm right and someone else is wrong. This is just how I do it. So I'm going to start here and I'll literally uh, brick all the way down, leave the hairline out, and then we'll go back and we'll do the hairline in the front last. think looks good looks really good but as um, Emma and I have identified look at the weight and the heaviness through those and so now it's time to take some of that bulk out and I'm gonna do a combination of point cutting and um, I'm gonna use a texturizing scissor too you guys often ask about my scissors so um, they can all be bought on my site. So I'll be using the EPF in um, 
six, uh, yeah, six inch, and then I'm going to use a crocodile, which is our texturizing scissor. Let's put you down and put you up a bit high. Get this way for me. Great. Spin you around a little bit this way. So this is about, it is removing weight out of the ends, but it's also um, giving the hair space to move because at the moment it's so dense on the ends that it all falls into one spot and it's got to stack out rather than being able to sit flatter. I want to make sure though we don't cut across our, our cutting line. That's not good. We're going to end up, we'll end up making it really choppy on the ends. If that's what you're looking for, that's fine, but we're looking for like a seamless look, but we just want it to be lighter. Bit of violet in on the root. I reckon that's really cool. Okay. Emma's at uni, studying to be one of the leaders of the new school in the world. And um, she wants to have something that is uh, relevant for her and her age and, and where she's at in life right now. And if you just went and made it blonde and platinum, yeah, sure, that would be hot as well. But I wanted to make sure we had some variation in there. Again, this is about having a layered appearance, but not seeing any of those classic layer marks through there. It's just not, it's just not very nice. I mean, I'm not, not into it. I know that there is still very much a place for classic layering, but I just think in the way that we're styling the hair and the versatility that I know a lot of my clients are asking for to go and box them into having that very classic layered look just means that they have to, you know, can only style it one way. And if they wanted to wear it, say, straight, you can see that it just appears to be all one length. And then if they want to tong it, it's definitely got um, enough movement in there to be able to not have it like a massive triangle if you wear it um, uh, curled. Because if you wear it curled or wavy, the hair needs to stack. And if you haven't given it space for the hair to stack, it ends up being really, really wide, which is uh, not, in my opinion, it's not something that's ask for a lot. I don't think it's very nice. So if you disagree with me, feel free to tell me in the comments section. Wouldn't be the first time. Sure, it won't be the last. And we're done. Beautiful. We are just left with smooth setter. Not too much, actually just put too much on my hands, so I'll just take some off. I'll spin you around this way, so I can see. We just want to settle down the flyaway a little bit. And I'm gonna give it a, a little brush through just to loosen it up. fix it with a little bit of style fixer. I like this behind your ear, I think that's cool. I love that really strong violet glow around the hairline. I think it just makes it look almost like, like a root stretch for on scalp lightened hair. Close close your eyes darling so we don't get any friendly fire. We'll settle down those.
me just give one last check. That's good. Very good. What do you think? Yeah, I love it. Looks good, huh? Let's just do a little spin around so we can see. Really, really cool blonde. Again, it's just not like, I always try and think of ways to, I don't know, make things just a little bit different, give it a point of difference. So as I said to you, when I was applying the toner, I left it um, lighter in uh, last in the front. So we got it on there and it gave it that nice glow. It's also, um, you know, um, it's got that beautiful transition into the end. So it's not like it's just all one color. It's just, I guess it's just like, a, it's the same as what you'd, you do if uh, you're doing a root stretch technique on someone with balayage, so I think it's really good and it suits you. Yeah, I um, I took a lot of uh, texture out of the, or a lot of weight out of the ends. Oof. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's um, you've got a lot of hair, so I think um, it was a good result. So thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. I love it. Good singlet. Yeah. Get if you want to support me, please go and buy a t-shirt. Um, just have to go over my Instagram, and there's a online store, so you can follow the link there and buy something from there. Um, you can buy stuff from the YouTube store, but if you want cutter, you can only get it from my Instagram. So um, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Thank you. If um, you guys know someone who you think may benefit from watching this video, please make sure you share it with them. It's important that we share what we see so that other people can grow. Um, and if you are um, trying something new, I encourage everyone out there to put your uh, camera or iPad on and uh, film it and share it with people as well because it's really important. Um, that's how this journey started. You asked me earlier today, that's how it started. Started with just uh, the thought of sharing with someone who might benefit from it. So um, please make sure you subscribe to the channel um, so you get all the uh, latest videos that are coming out. I, sorry, I have so many in backlog. I will edit them and get them to you straight away. But um, from us today here in Canberra, Axis, it's uh, goodbye.